Hi everyone, my name is James Gibson. Welcome along to this Photoshop walkthrough for creation of the, the senescence image that I made um, was used on the 2020 New Zealand camera PSNZ publication. I hope you like it. It, it should hopefully be um, reasonably simple to follow through all the different steps that, that I use on making the image and give you a bit of inspiration for creating your own composites in future. If you if you find this useful, please leave me a comment, um, like and subscribe to the video. There'll be a subscribe button at the end. Uh, and um, if you want to follow along and, and work through it yourself, step by step, uh, head on over to my website. You can um, download all the source files uh, and, a, and a step by step guide to work through it um, alongside the video. Um, yeah, enjoy. OK, so here we are. I've loaded the the base image into Photoshop, as you can see here. Um, it doesn't look very much like the finished version, but that's kind of okay, that's sort of the point. What we're gonna do is, in this first section, we're going to deal with processing this, this base image. So we're gonna do a little bit of tweaking to, to make the shape look a little bit more like what we're after. Uh, and then we're gonna just do some, some basic kind of fine tuning of brightness and, and contrast around the image. So, so let's get started. So we'll start by duplicating this base layer, Con control or command J, and we'll turn that one off. That gives me a, a safe background if I ever need to go back to it. Now, what I really wanna do is create this nice sort of symmetrical um, hillside on the bottom. So I'm gonna start by using uh, puppet warp to just distort this base section here. You could use um, the transform tool and just warp the base. Uh, but what I'm really keen to do is not affect my lighthouse particularly. So we will go to edit puppet warp. And that brings up this whole map. And we'll put some pins in around the base of the lighthouse here and around the top, just to make sure that this lighthouse section doesn't move. We're then going to just grab another pen over here and pull this, this corner down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to try and make this other side symmetrical. So we're going to pull that side down as well. And we'll pull that base off a little bit there too. And you can see it's kind of in, in this puppet warp. Imagine you're kind of stretching a, a big rubber sheet around and pulling and pushing. So it's, it's distorted the top corners here as well. Um, we can either pull this back or we can turn our base, base background layer back on and that'll fill in that gap reasonably well. I'm not too stressed about it at the moment because when we put our um, uh, textures over the top, it's pretty much going to mask any major issues there. Or maybe, we'll, maybe we'll pull that one up just a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. If I turn that layer on, you see, you can you can barely see. There's a little bit of a transition there, but it's not too bad. So I'm kind of happy with that. We'll just clone out this edge down here. So I'm going to add another layer. We'll call this one cloning. Oh, CV loaning. There we go, cloning. Um, grab our clone stamp tool. I'm going to zoom in, which is by pressing the Alt key. And then by holding down Shift, I can zoom in. And I'm just going to really quickly Run out these trees over here. There we go. Uh, I think this is actually a bit of hillside showing through on the mist in the background there. There's supposed to be a dirty great mountain here. Anyone who knows this lighthouse will, will know that there should be a mountain there. But hey, um, you don't always get these great days. So there we go. We've got our base sort of tidied up. Could just tidy up this bottom corner here too as well. As a, let's just clone that bit out. We now need to just tweak our lighthouse a bit. I want to draw a little bit of attention to the door here, and I want to make the light a little bit brighter too. So we're going to add uh, some contrast to the main tower, and then we're going to lighten up the door and lighten up the lamp. So I'm going to add a curves layer and we'll really crank this up quite severely. There we go. That's that's pretty full on. Um, and we'll use the layer mask here. I'm just going to grab my quick select tool, run around, 
it's pretty lazy but because we've got this nice kind of simple background photoshop will do a reasonable job of selecting um and that'll give me a, a brightening of the tower of increasing contrast of the tower if i just deselect control d there we go now we're going to uh, lighten up the door and then lighten up the lamp as well so this is going to be fairly simple we're just going to add a, a, a brightness contrast adjustment layer we'll press Control i to convert the layer mask to black um, on my brightness contrast layer i'm going to make brightness um i'm going to bring it up quite a lot we'll make it to about 100 somewhere somewhere there will do um and we'll bring the contrast up a bit as well and then all i'm going to do is brush white on here onto the door with a fairly low opacity so I can build it up gradually. Um, I just, just wanna add a little bit of a color and excitement to this door here without going too nuts. So you can see on the layer mask here, there's a tiny little bit of white coming in now. There's actually a, a glow off that, um, uh, off the top of the, the lintel there, which is there in the original photograph. It's just reflected light from the, the clouds, but we don't wanna, amplify that too much. So um, I'm just going to make sure that I haven't added to that in my layer mask there. There we go, that'll do. And you can turn that little eye on and off to see what you've done. Now we'll do the same thing again with the lamp. Invert the layer mask. I think if you press Alt when you um, add a layer mask, it'll bring it in completely black. So this time we'll go um, about the same, maybe a little bit more. So obviously you could just include that in that, that separate one, but I wanna be able to adjust both later. So I'll, I'll do it separately, click on my layer mask, increase the size of my brush. So it's, uh, I'm using generally a, a soft brush, so hardness zero, that's pretty standard. Um, and we're just gonna, Brush, oops, brush my foreground color across the light there to make that a little bit brighter. There we go, sweet. And you can see how that's affected. So I've spilled over a little bit. We'll get rid of some of that haloing just by brushing with black around the edges. Again, because this is a pretty texture heavy image, I'm not too stressed about this. I want to highlight things that I want you to see but everything else is going to be covered by, by the textures anyway. So it's not really too, too much of an issue. So we're now going to add the extra parts to this composite, the, the birds and the cows. Um, they were actually shot in the same location, but on a, a, a nicer day a few days later. Um, so it's reasonably easy to, to drag and drop them in. We've got a fairly simple blue sky. Um, uh, the lighting's slightly different, so we might have to do a bit of tweaking to some of the layers, but it's not too bad. And there are fairly minor little added extra in this image anyway. So as you can see, I've opened up the birds and cows layer. So here's our birds layer, um, and here's the cows. We're going to use these two cows here, but hey, feel free to add a few more if you're playing along at home. So for this one, I'm going to be pretty pretty rough and ready on this. I'm just going to grab my lasso tool and I'm going to grab these little birds here. Copy those and paste them to a new layer. So that was uh, control C and then control J to do that. So if I turn the base layer off, I've now I've got this layer, it's active. And I'm going to use the quicks, uh, the magic wand tool and just grab all that blue. Maybe a little bit too much. Um, you can adjust the tolerance. So that's how different the colors are going to be. Um, I'm just going to grab that blue. I'm going to press the delete key. Um, these are pretty rough. You'll see if I zoom in, there's not actually a great deal of detail there. They're just vaguely bird shaped. Um, but that's kind of what I want. Now I'm going to go to my move tool, click on that, and then drag and drop them onto 
the top of this. Um, if I press Control T for transform, I can now scale those guys up a little bit, pick a spot for them. Um, oh, I guess let's put them a little bit further away. There we go. So that's those guys. Um, and I'm also, let's turn that one off. Uh, we'll go back to this layer. I'm also going to grab this guy here because he's he's pretty cool. Um, so I'll do the same thing again. Lasso tool to select, paste that to a new layer. Use my magic wand tool to select the blue, delete that, and then drag and drop this little bird on here as well. And we'll make him a little bit bigger as well. That's pretty pretty basic stuff, but you get the general gist. Oops. You get the general gist of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to move move these around, make it look a little bit more more realistic. Um, just for a bit of fun. And we're going to do the same thing with cows. We're just going to do it uh, in reverse. So because we've now got a mountain in the background, uh, it's not going to be so easy to do that selection. So we're going. To, I'm going to use the quick select tool. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to try and select this guy here. I need to zoom in because I kind of want his legs too. And he's going to look a bit weird if he doesn't have legs. So it's, uh, it's accidentally selecting the blue here. So if I press Alt and drag through there, it'll so Alt will remove from my selection, make my brush even smaller. And then I can do the same thing there. Gives me a fairly rough and ready selection, but that's kind of okay. That's what I want. Copy, paste to a new layer. There's my cow. And then we will drag and drop that onto my base layer. Should really name these as well. Let's do that now. So we'll call this cow one, we'll call this Click and call this birds, and we'll call this one single bird. There we go. So now at least we know what we're doing. In fact, in the process of doing that, I can see we've got a bit of a, a nasty selection. So we'll just go back in here, grab my brush tool, nice and small, and we're just going to brush that, that selection out. There we go. That's better. So we've got one cow, we'll go back and do exactly the same thing with the other cow. Turn my base layer back on. Grab my quick select tool. Okay, that's good enough for what we're trying to do. So we will copy, paste that to a new layer. And then with our move tool, oh, we've gained an extra little bit. So this is the benefit of seeing what we've selected by turning that base layer off. I can actually now just grab my eraser tool and brush that bit out. I don't actually want that. I'm going to grab this second cow, drag and drop him onto here. And there's my second cow. Now, because I clicked on that layer, it's come in in the wrong place. We'll just move that. Cow too sweet. So we'll bring him down so his feet aren't actually in there. Now, if you look, uh, you can see that the base of the um, lighthouse here, there's a little bit of motion blur in the camera and a little bit of um, softness in my depth of field. Whereas my cows look really quite sharp, and I'm not massively keen on that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to blur these two cow layers using a Gaussian blur. Uh, well, let's stop the first layer. We'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, I think maybe a couple of pixels. So you can see he's getting a preview. That's probably a bit too much. So if we go two pixels, that looks pretty good. And that'll help blur the edges as well. So that's why we're not too concerned about the, the quality of the um, selection. 
because we're going to blur it. Same thing here, and now I can just duplicate that original blur. Okay, there's our two cows. We've got our birds in. That's the uh, the cloning to make up this composite. I've just added a curves layer as well to this, so I'm just going to turn that on so you can see what effect that has. Um, the idea here is to try and reduce the impact of that background. The background's quite dark. Um, and when I add the textures over the top in a second, you'll um, what we want to do is, is have the textures really standing out from the background. I don't really want those clouds to show so much. So we've just added a curves layer just to brighten it up a little bit. OK, let's add some textures. So here's my first texture. This one's. Uh, I think it's uh, some lichen growing on an old old car somewhere in a, in a broken down car yard. So we'll just grab the move tool, click and drag that onto my base layer. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit by pressing the Alt key and uh, scrolling the mouse wheel. Uh, we will drop the opacity on this guy down, well, maybe 70%. And we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. Um, that'll let the background come through a little bit. There's some great tutorials on um, on what the different blend modes do uh, online, so I'm not really going to go into that here. Have a have a browse for what some other people do, and they'll explain all the maths behind it as well, which is way more than you need to know. Um, but hey, it's fun if you need, if you're into that sort of thing. So I'm going to press Control T, uh, and we'll just move this thing around. I like my texture, uh, this rough texture at the top here. Um, I want to see it kind of surrounding that lighthouse a bit. So we'll maybe uh, flip horizontal and spin that around and we'll grow it out a bit. What I'm trying to do is avoid actually overlapping too much of the birds or the, the lighthouse itself. I just kind of want the texture to be kind of there at the top to fill in that dead space. So what do we reckon? Make sure that you actually cover the whole of the image as well. That's always a bit annoying. Um, yeah, there we go. Something like that, that looks pretty cool. Um, that's my first texture. The green is a bit of apparent. Let's, let's zoom back in, control zero to fill the screen. Um, the, the green's a bit overpowering, so we're going to add a um, hue saturation adjustment layer. We'll clip that onto the, the base layer. And then in here, we're just going to drop the greens, the saturation of the greens down. Uh, and also drop the saturation of the yellows a little bit. And maybe, maybe let's have a play with that, that color balance, get rid of those a bit. Yeah, there we go. It's made the whole thing quite magenta, but don't stress about that just yet. Oh, that's that's pretty close. That looks pretty good. The other thing I want to do is um, I want my light to shine through a little bit more on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask onto here. And then with a soft brush, uh, again, we'll drop the opacity down reasonably low. And I just want to have that light shine through a little bit more than it was. Don't want it too much. There we go. Excellent. That's my first layer. You can see the difference that it makes with that curves thing to just lighten the whole image up a bit. OK, that was my first layer. So let's drop the second one on. Same deal. Oops, just check where at the top. Yep. Drag and drop. Uh, this one we are going to change this one to uh, an overlay, and it's going to be quite a light um, opacity on this one. We'll just make this about 50%. If you know exactly what it is, you can type the number in these boxes here. So again, Control T, 
you know, transform. And we'll just move this around until we're kind of happy with where it is. I, what I'm really trying to avoid is these big scratches. I don't really want um, dirty great cuts in my image. I'm just trying to add a little bit of interest um, into the, the dead spaces. What we can do, of course, is clone those guys out. So maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's what we'll do. Hey, maybe you like them in, uh, whatever. Looks pretty good. We'll drop that on there. We'll just clone out that scratch. So I'm going to jump in here. Let's, let's just try the, the spot healing brush, see if that does a reasonable job on that little scratch there. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Um, cool. There we go. We can potentially reduce the opacity again over the top of the lighthouse here if you don't like that bit, or move the texture around so the lighthouse is in a gap. Um, and this one, we'll just add a blend, a layer mask over the top, grab our little soft brush. Paint white, and we're just going to paint white very loosely over the top there, just to get rid of that texture effect off the lighthouse a little bit. It's just a bit overpowering. There we go. We're pretty much there. Just a couple of last little tweaks to do. I'm going to clone out some of these um, extra little distractions around the image, and um, and then we'll add a vignette to really home us in on the bit that we're interested in. Uh, and then we're done. So I've got a, a cloning layer here where we removed that scratch. I'm going to leave that one. It's pretty specific edit, but we'll add another one. We'll call this one cloning. Probably should have labeled layer four. Uh, labeling layers is it's good practice. Uh, it's really handy when you come back and try and work out what it is that you did and what order you did it in later. So we're just going to use the spot healing brush again get rid of these little white blobs around here, and then get rid of these areas where, for some reason, the truck didn't have any lichen growing on it. There we go, it's done a pretty good job of those. There's a couple of other little, little spots to get rid of. Cool, pretty happy with that. That looks kind of cool. Uh, now we're gonna add a color balance adjustment layer to try and warm the, the tones up a little bit. So we'll just have a bit of a tweak. These. We can adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights separately. Um, so you can kind of go as far as you want with this, really. Um, that looks pretty good. And then the shadows, we'll do the same sort of thing with the shadows. Drop a little bit of that red out, warm it up. And we're getting that kind of slightly bizarre, moldy, but warm kind of effect. And the last thing we're going to do is add um, brightness contrast. So this is going to be my vignette. The image is kind of dark enough here. So what I actually want to do is lighten everything except the, the top. So I'm just going to increase my brightness. And then on the layer mask, which conveniently comes in when you create an adjustment layer, I'm just going to start drawing um, some, some black on here. I'm going to use the um, gradient mask between my foreground color and transparent. We'll have a drop the opacity. And now we can just sort of create a sort of U shape around my main lighthouse here. You can see the effect if I just turn that on and off. There we go, that's pretty good. Looks good, and we're done. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope it was reasonably educational for you and, and all made a bit of sense. If you want to have a play uh, following along to this video, then head on over to my website. You can, you can download the source files there. 
Um, uh, likewise, if you enjoyed it, uh, click the like button, subscribe, and uh, uh, yeah, if enough people like it, maybe I'll, I'll do a few more. Thanks ever so much for watching.